Hey guys, Joe here with Excursion Cuts. Generally speaking, I like to vacation in places other than big cities. You know, I'm a mountains guy, I like the tropics. Big cities I generally try to avoid. However, New York City is my exception to that rule. I love New York City. And if you're a photographer or a cinematographer, New York City should definitely be on your target list of destinations if you've never been. Now, NYC is so big. It's so populated. There's so many things to see there that I feel like I really do need to narrow my focus a little bit for this video. I know you guys like it when I keep it short and sweet to the point. So in the interest of that, what I'm going to do is focus only on photography tips for walking around New York City. Where to go, shooting tips, what kind of gear to bring, so that if you're going to be visiting New York City for the first time, you're well prepared. What are you most excited to do in New York City? I can't wait to ride a subway. Down you go, Chloe. Go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's so much stuff to cover in New York City and this could easily turn into an entire video series, I'm going to narrow my focus to only photography tips and I'll treat this video as if you had never visited New York City before. So if this is your first time, you're going to find some useful information here. Here's my first tip. Plan out your trip really well in advance. I was only in New York for three solid days a couple of weeks ago. Now I had two partial days, you know, travel days, but in that short period of time, I was able to visit a lot of places, lots of quantity, lots of quality. And if you plan these things out, you'll notice that New York City, especially in Manhattan, things are in relatively close proximity to one another. For example, if you stay in Midtown, which is where I stayed last time, you're near a ton of stuff. Empire State Building, Chrysler Building, St. Patrick's Cathedral, Radio City Music Hall, the Flatiron District, Central Park, Bryant Park. There's just a ton of things that you can do, and a lot of those are in walking distance. Now, by contrast, if you stay downtown or lower Manhattan, lower Manhattan's gonna have the 9-11 Memorial, One World Trade Center, the Oculus, Chinatown, Soho, the Brooklyn Bridge, the Financial District. All of these things can be crammed into a single day if you really want. So we're here in uh, Midtown, there are so many things to photograph here. And it's not just the city, it's not just the concrete jungle kind of stuff that's here to shoot. There are lots of parks. Right now, Chloe and I are on our way over to Bryant Park. So during our trip here, we'll show you uh, several of the iconic shots. But if you ever do come to New York, you're going to want to devote a day to just wandering around and basically just getting lost. There's been a movement in New York over the past decade or so, you know, as one of the biggest cities on the planet, New York is also one of the biggest polluters on the planet. So integrating nature within this concrete jungle has been uh, something that's been gradually expanding. There's now the Highline Park. It's just such a cool invention. It's kind of a repurposing of an old L train that's made now into kind of a nature walk where you go from Chelsea up north towards Hell's Kitchen. And in that span of space, you see just some really cool architecture, some really cool nature, some good uh, landscaping. Um, there's some really old buildings and stuff that are worth taking pictures of. There's no shortage of really cool murals and stuff that you can shoot. And of course, at the time of this recording, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, they unveiled uh, a new attraction in Hudson Yards called The Vessel. And basically, the High Line Park will dump you out at it. So if you're walking north upward from Chelsea, um, plan on saving some battery life and some SD cards to take some shots of the vessel. The vessel 
really wild looking staircase structure. Kind of looks like a honeycomb. It has been getting a little bit of bad press from the locals who are, you know, kind of claiming that it's an eyesore. But for photographers, this thing's just flat out cool. It's a very cool structure. I would hit it at night because it does light up nice and gold. So if you shoot it during blue hour, you're gonna have that tungsten yellow goldish kind of color, those lights against the blue backdrop. It'll look really cool. Now, you'll be pleased to hear that if, if it's gonna be your first time in New York City and you're a photographer, a lot of the print worthy shots that you're just gonna get printed on metal and hung up in your house, you can get for free. But there are a couple in particular that you may wanna spend a little bit of money and splurge on and take advantage of. The top of Rockefeller Center, otherwise known as Top of the Rock, and the top of One World Trade Center, which is what replaced the Twin Towers. There are pros and cons to each. I just did the top of One World Trade Center. Each of those buildings, by the way, it's about a little under $40 a head to go up. The top of the World Trade Center is really cool because it's the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere. You have a 360 degree view from the observation deck up there. So you can shoot the Statue of Liberty, you can shoot the Manhattan and Brooklyn Bridges, you can shoot Dumbo, you can shoot Chinatown. And if you've got a decent telephoto lens, you can point it towards Midtown and get the Empire State Building. Here's the con with One World Trade Center. You're shooting through glass. So it doesn't have an open observation deck the way that the top of the rock does. So be aware of that. Shooting through glass is not ideal in any situation. And unfortunately, when I was there, it was raining and kind of cloudy. So there weren't a lot of pictures I got that I thought were even worth processing. But on one side of the building, I was able to look down and actually shoot down on the Oculus. And that was actually a really unique perspective and probably one of the, my favorite pictures of the Oculus that I took. One World Trade Center has this really, really impressive <laughs> elevator ride that goes up. It's basically a 3D show. As you're going up to the top, it's basically showing you the development of New York over the course of, you know, 100 years. It starts off with forests and you gradually see the buildings getting bigger and bigger. But the perspective of the 3D camera is changing as you go up. So you're seeing parallax. It's just, it's wild. It's almost worth the money just to go up the elevator. All right, Top of the Rock. Top of the Rock is in Midtown. And as far as perspectives go, that's probably the more desirable spot. But because it's in Midtown, you've got awesome shots of Central Park. And then on the, of course, the south side of the building faces downtown or lower Manhattan. So you can shoot the Empire State Building and have One World Trade Center in the background of your shot. Now, one of the cons with Top of the Rock is it's by reservation only. And they say they usually recommend one day of notice. So keep that in mind. If it's if you are there for a couple of days, you are going to need a day's notice to make that reservation. Depending on how much time you are going to spend in New York, you may be limited to mostly Manhattan. But if you're going to explore the boroughs, which I do highly recommend, I would start with Brooklyn. Brooklyn is an awesome place to go uh, photograph. There's several places in Dumbo, which by the way stands for Down Under Manhattan Bridge Overpass. And you can get some shots in which the Manhattan Bridge arch actually kind of frames the Empire State Building. A ton of people there, you're not gonna be the only one getting that shot. But when you pass through there, you kind of have to do it. Bring a telephoto lens, get a couple of blocks back and you should be able to get a really good shot. There's a ton of stuff to do here. Aside from shooting the Brooklyn Bridge and the Manhattan Bridge, uh, there's a ton of, ton of really cool stores down there. You've got Brooklyn Bridge Park and a couple of really famous pizza joints there. Juliana's being one of them. Today was a pretty full day. We went to the Bronx, we went to Arthur Avenue, which I highly recommend. But now, just for practicing photography, we're wandering around Central Park, just kind of see what's here to photograph. Came here last night for sunset, got a couple of cool shots with some reflections of a lake. But now, Chloe and I are on our own, just seeing what there is to see.
So I want to wrap up this video by saying this. If you've never been to New York City before, even if it's not, even if you're not a photographer and you're just going to visit the city, you're probably going to be really pleasantly surprised by how many misconceptions there are with New York City. New Yorkers have a reputation for being rude. That's just not the case. People there are really nice. And pretty much every time I go, people are very helpful, very friendly. And you got to remember, over 8 million people live in the city, but a lot of the people you encounter are also tourists. So even if it was true that New Yorkers are rude, it's not. A lot of the people you run into are just folks from other states uh, here in the US. For the longest time, New York City had a reputation for being crime stricken and just a dangerous place to be. And while that's true that it probably was the case a while back, crime rates in New York City have been on a steady decline for decades now. Manhattan in particular is very safe. I don't feel unsafe anywhere, even riding the subways, I feel very safe in there. You're gonna to wanna to be aware of your surroundings just like you would anywhere. But the real reason for that in Manhattan isn't so much that you know there's a high risk of you getting mugged by some random person, but there probably is a chance of getting clipped by a car <laughs> when you walk around the city. Um, people jump the gun on the light turning green to walk. You really do need to be aware of cars and make sure that um, if you have children with you like I did, make sure you hold that kid's hand when you're crossing the street. And here's the best thing about New York City. It's the people. It's one of the most diverse places in the US. There's so many different cultures there. And I don't care what you're into in the way of food, New York City's got it for you. And because the city is so crowded, the people who live there are used to that number of people being around. No one cares what you do, which as a photographer is a really cool freedom to have. Vlogging is something that, you know, I'm totally fine doing it at home relatively comfortable doing it uh, in Lake Tahoe where I live, you know, walking on hiking trails and stuff. Hate doing it in airports. I was 100% comfortable vlogging in New York and I was vlogging in front of people all the time. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to bat an eye. Now, this tip in New York City is pretty important and it may actually sound obvious to you to be honest, but don't look for shots. Don't look for compositions that are devoid of people. Not going to happen. New York City is unbelievably crowded. But those crowds are just a part of the city. They're a part of the experience. Work them into your shot. Have people be the subject of your photos. Have people be the foreground element of the you know, photos with the buildings in the background. Look for patterns of yellow cabs. You know, look for patterns of the NYPD squad cars. All of these elements are things that you are going to want to include in your compositions. All right, folks, thank you so much for tuning into another episode. Don't forget to subscribe and tap that notification bell. Use the link below to follow me on Instagram, and I will see you guys in the next video.